everyone. Welcome to Mind Pump. In the first half of this episode, we talk about two neglected bicep exercises that can kickstart your growth. Later, we talk about the Colorado experiment where Casey Viator gained 63 pounds of muscle in only 28 days, as well as other topics. In the second half of the show, we coach four live callers on questions such as, I'm skeptical about full body workouts, but I'm having a hard time getting through my split. So do you think it'd be good for me to try one? I have body aches and muscle imbalances. What's the best way to correct this? I'm a hard gainer. How can I build some mass this winter? And I'm a female trainer and I'm nervous about spotting men with heavy lifts. What should I do? One more thing. We have another channel. It's called Mind Pump Clips where we take clips from the show. They're short, they're easy to watch and easy to share. Go check it out right here on YouTube and enjoy the show. Are you trying to get your biceps to respond? Well, try these two often neglected bicep exercises. The first one is the hammer curl. A lot of people don't do that exercise, but it's a phenomenal exercise for the brachialis muscle. The second one is a reverse curl. Almost nobody does this exercise. It is great for the top of the forearms, but again, it also works the brachialis. This is a flat muscle underneath the bicep, and when you develop it, it pushes the bicep out. And I've had a lot of success with clients on making their arms look better simply by focusing on those two often neglected exercises. You know, you, the, you position this tip uh, for aesthetic purposes, right? But I actually um, have found this to be a necessary exercise for me to avoid uh, elbow pain. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So when I was chasing the heavy deadlifts and I wasn't doing a lot of these, uh, you know, aux auxiliary exercises. I was focused purely on just the compound lifts and I was getting stronger and stronger. One of the first things that, um, I sort of noticed, I started getting the, that, that elbow pain yeah. and of course, addressing it with some wrist and shoulder mobility started to alleviate, but then what kept it from coming back was actually incorporating the, the reverse curls or Zotman curls, mm -hmm. hammer curls was actually strengthening those muscles and taking them through full range of motion. Yeah. Well, uh, the two important things with biceps, when you're looking at variety, one is elbow position. So elbow by my <clears throat> body, elbow in front of me, maybe even elbow up here. And the other one is hand position, the hand supinating the hand and pronating the hand, the biceps involved in that. So if all your bicep exercises involve your hands being supinated, you're actually neglecting training the bicep in these kind of different ranges of motion. That's why throwing these exercises in often gets people's biceps to finally respond when they've hit a plateau. Yeah, I just know that you got to do this gradually. Uh, oh, yeah. With the reverse curl, I remember that was one of those. That, like, I was a bit overzealous at getting back to doing them because it wasn't something that, like, I would just normally program in there. And, oh, man, I definitely strained my forearm flexor. And it was one of those things where – it was a. It was definitely a body part that was neglected. You could tell because just, the strength wasn't there yet. And mm. So, like to to build that gradually up was definitely something I had to to take my time with. Yeah. But it's definitely highlighted the fact of how necessary it was for me to address. Yeah, I I um I remember going through a period of uh, really trying to get my hammer curl and reverse curl stronger, and it was mainly through because of judo and jujitsu, because a lot of the gripping your hand is in this position. Yeah, and uh, my arms grew. And my arms grew because those were exercises that I kind of neglected. So it wasn't like I trained my biceps more. It was just that positioning. And I will also say this, when it comes to bicep training, a neutral position with the hand is actually more functional, in my opinion, than the supinated mm -hmm. grip. You're more often, you're going to grab things with your hands facing each other. And this position here is uh, in the real world. I mean, you need that kind of strength. So if all your bicep exercises are here, again, you're neglecting a, 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 an important uh, movement, important range of motion, and just throwing those in. Just swap out some of your supinated curls for hammer curls, and like I said, watch what happens. You'll often see some growth yeah, you know, yeah. or something like that. Today's giveaway, MAPS Split, Advanced Bodybuilder Style Workout Program. Here's how you can win free access to that. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications, do all those things. If we declare you the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section, and then you'll get free access to MAPS Split. Also, January, this is when everybody starts working out. People set goals for the year. Well, check out what we did. We put together three bundles, each one giving you between six to nine months of planned workouts. Okay, so it's all set up for you. And they're bundles because they're multiple workout programs. Here's what they are. We have the new to weightlifting bundle. We have the body transformation bundle and the new year extreme bundle. Okay, all three of them will save you between $300 to $350 off of retail. All right, 
If you're interested, if you want to learn more, you just want to sign up, click on the link at the top of the description below to get set up. All right, here comes the show. You guys, uh, are you guys still tracking and, and paying attention to all the stuff that's going on with the the chat uh, GBT and the all the AI stuff that's coming out software for generating? Like, obviously, you saw the the lame uh, trend on Instagram of showing the AI generated pictures and stuff oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. It's pretty wild, like how how like I felt like it came out of nowhere, uh -huh. and then now I, it's I'm, everywhere. I'm seeing it all over the place. Uh -huh. I saw the image that justin had generated the other day was just it was blew me away it yes. looked like a, a really good piece of art for this new this new newsletter that we're going to be releasing soon and i thought it was like epic our, yeah, our, so our, cool. our artists i mean are a lot of artists can be put out of business what i mean by that is like uh, like of course there's like famous artists right i'm not talking about the ones that are like you know millionaires and, but i'm talking about like artists that work for companies like freelancers and, yeah and yeah. they create you know logos and designs and you know those kinds of, like it feels like the <sighs> this these ai generated images like replace that very easily i i, I definitely think it's it's going to disrupt everything um and i don't really know what that looks like i'd have to talk to some of these graphic designers because it it was just so the the image quality and like what it generated was way better than I anticipated. And if you think about how much further they can advance that from where it is right now, and you're just all you got to do is give it parameters and have it base it off of a style. So unless you're you're creating a new style that doesn't exist yet, um, it, the, it's fair game for the this bot to basically just like create something within that vein and that's, it does it well i think that's what i've been most i was talking about this with my my two friends last they they were unfamiliar with this stuff and i was like you have to log in check this out player what's blowing my mind is that every time i've used it it's better than what i would have anticipated yep. Yep. that's the part we knew this was coming we yeah. talked about it and it was just and all i thought was like ah you know original yeah. artists are still always going to be way better because it's going to be you know that that's part of the beauty in the art is how unique and but I mean, to what you're saying, Justin, is creating you, unique pieces. You could literally, like I guess, tell my buddy last night. Like, I mean, I said uh, for your your wife's birthday, I said uh, have it write her a love letter, put the put in <laughs> oh, in, no. in, in Shakespeare form, and like a sonnet. <laughs> yeah, and add add a couple of things. We have two kids together. How old she is? Her favorite things. Like, cue it. A few things and watch what it writes you. Yeah. It'll write something Did better it do than something pretty crazy. I mean, I told him to do that. I haven't I haven't heard back from him when we were discussing how I did the Instagram post with you guys, but I uh, I just think it's so crazy how you how specific you can be and and how good it and or how vague and still how good it so will be. So here's the yeah. challenge. Here's what I'm gonna predict uh the challenge is gonna be. Because this technology is so potentially disrupting, there's going to be a legislative battle that's going to start to happen where politicians, driven by their, you know, who they represent, whatever, are going to try to pass laws to prevent AI from, you know, quote unquote, taking the jobs of people. And then the counter argument is going to be you are preventing progress, you're preventing advancements with laws like this. For example, when uh, you know when the industrial revolution happened and machinery was able to do what people used to do by hand, there were definitely places in the world that passed laws saying you cannot make rugs uh, by machine; they have to be made by hand in order to protect their workers. And what ended up happening was they got passed up, and they can't produce fast enough. Those places actually remain poor. And yes, they protected some workers, but progress halted. So I think I think we're going to see a lot of pressure. Because like with artists, for example, like how much you want to bet artists and musicians are going to try to lobby and say, we need laws preventing AI from creating music, from creating art or from it being used. Maybe individuals can do it, but it can't be sold and used. That's, I bet you that's what's going to happen. Well, I don't know that they'll get very far. It, it, honestly, I'm, I'm tripping out that simultaneously it's advancing alongside text because I thought if anything, it would have been AI would have been more text driven first. You know, the imagery stuff is like really crazy to me that it can, it can generate its own 
um, version of of yeah. uh, of these like famous artists and do it well. It was not like hokey or anything. So um, I don't know that they're going to be able to have much of a uh, an argument for blocking because it's a, it's an original piece. Still, it's in the style, and that's kind of always been gray area to begin with. Well, know? I think that's the 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 only leg they have to stand on or the argument i guess i don't disagree so they're going to try how successful they're going to be that's the question like how the hell what are you going to pass because the closest thing that i could see is like okay if you cue the ai and you use my name you use my art as a base Mm -hmm. i should get some sort of a royalty right so like if you like name a i don't know Uh, that that could be an angle they'll use right like like you you type my name in there that's right if you use my name specifically yeah but think about the the how far that'll reach every artist every creator has bar stands on the shoulders of giants every time we give advice on fitness we're probably not the first ones to say that or bring certain topics up so a law like that could be interpreted in such crazy ways where it would prevent any creator from creating anything. Well, I mean, did, That's you, the did we share on the podcast what we who we Andrew did? Did we share that on the podcast when she, when Andrew cued it to write a mind pump episode? Oh yeah, I mean that was crazy. Yeah, like write up a like an outline for an episode. Yeah, and it yeah. out. I mean, it really. I mean, what, it was basic. But what you, and that's what the current tech, but what you could do is you could have this basic outline, tweak it a little bit, and now you have your outline versus having to create everything. Yeah, or, or, you know, three other guys, you know, communicate that message. And it's, and it really, it, it's, and it's the formula that we have built over thousands of episodes of learning what works. <laughs> yeah. so it took us to get there where this, this fucking AI yeah. <laughs> spit it out, you know what I'm saying? And, and literally like five seconds spit out an outline that is literally the format of, of a show. And I thought, wow, that is, that's crazy. It makes me curious, like where we are with an audio AI. Like, so where they're taking voice clips from people oh, right. and generating sentences and uh, audio. I'm telling you guys right now that that when it, people think art, like music and creativity, they think that machines can't touch that. I don't, I completely disagree. I think that the machines are, or the AI, I say the machines like this is Terminator. The AI. <laughs> Skynet, it's all yeah, Skynet, ah, dude. I think that the AI is going to figure out because because it's got history of music, it's going to figure out what people like. Yeah, it might even be able to figure it out better and write a formula and create music that taps into. It will because there's our the, the, the yeah. book Hitmakers talks about this. I mean, most of the the success in in music in movies has a formula to it. It does, and that's why it, that's why it resonates with us is because there is a a bit yeah. of it that we recognize and that we're drawn like the hero's journey, right? Like that's a part of so many movies because it's a proven formula. We like it. We're drawn to that. The under, you know, the underdog story, right? Like we have these, these, these stories that have already proven that most people are drawn to and like it. And so, and the, and AI's ability to create something, especially when you can cue it. I mean, I think Doug made some funny comment that would be hilarious. Like write or uh, create a mind pump episode of, uh, with, uh, um, Sal, Sal talking in Adam's voice. You know, how fucking yeah, funny yeah, would that be yeah. if it's, you know, you co- you're me communicating, but in your voice or vice versa, yeah. but the way you would, you would talk. And we have th- enough dialogue that's recorded that the AI can generate and spit off something Dude, that is. We're um, so, it's so obvious. It's going to me. happen. It's so obvious to me. We're playing with fire right now because we don't know, like for forever, we've been the smartest, you know, creatures on this planet. In a very short, potentially very short period of time, we will be not just not the smartest, but we'll be surpassed by so much that we will be, we'll be like ants. That's literally what could potentially happen. Once these AI machines- So I felt that, okay, when I, when I made that dumb little post, like I'm sure the average person sees that it's like no big deal to them, okay, but- I, I I knew that I wanted to write something about our friendship and our partnership, yeah. right? Like our bond. And I wanted it to be somewhat meaningful. If I were to be completely on it, sit down and like put my thoughts on paper and then make sure grammatically it all lines. I mean, that's a half hour for me, probably. Sure. Okay. Give or take. That thing spit that off in five seconds. And not only did it spit it off in five seconds, but it was put together better than I think I could have put it together myself. Like that is crazy. 
Yeah. With my, my first attempt at something like that. And that's another thing too. We haven't even learned how to use the tool in, in, in an even more sophisticated way to make it even better. It's like, so the big, the big, oh my God, the big scare, scary. Right. everybody's worried about this. The big scare is that AI at some point will somehow kill us or control no. us or what. I think that's not the worry. My, what I think the big worry is going to be that these AI whatever devices or whatever are going to get so smart and so good that we're going to be left with nothing to do. Yeah, That is a big deal. People don't realize this. They think that'll be paradise. Oh, we don't have to do anything. I don't think people realize that's dangerous. how dangerous that is for, for mankind. When that all of our, everything is done for us by machines that are extremely efficient, extremely productive, ex just inexpensive. This is, this is why this conversation we're is- We're going to revert back. This is why this conversation is so interesting to me because I I didn't really care about the you know the Terminator theories and like all all the crazy potential even some when we joke back and forth about like the dishwashing and and shit like that <laughs> yeah. uh, to me this this what it's doing with copy and with art are are two of the most applicable ways I can see this thing disrupting yeah. uh our society like right away mm -hmm. and i think the first time that i saw an example of this it was really choppy and bad i don't remember who i was who i was listening to or who shared like an an ai generated oh bro like a year ago ai generated a movie script and it was silly that's right that's what it was mm -hmm. that was a year ago or yeah or two. that yeah. was and it was really ridiculous right yeah. it was like uh it was because yeah, you fed it like all these different script examples and then it just took the style of it and tried to like mash it all together yep. and it was all you know, uh, everything was all over the place. You can yeah. tell. It didn't match up. Yeah. yeah. Really so I, that, and so that's my my previous reference to this. And so what, what we've come from just then to now is mind-boggling to me. And to me is what is more likely, and I agree with you, Sal, what we're more likely to see is that this thing is going, and it's going to help. I mean, imagine, I mean, I already see how it's going to apply in our business. I mean, we have to write copy all the time. We have to create Im imagery all the time. If we could just plug in, create a logo that is stylistically like this, done like this, you know, in these parameters, and it spits off something that is beautiful, mm -hmm. uh, and we don't have to pay an artist I, thousands of dollars to do that. I, I mean, think, that's a big deal. I think Justin's theory uh, is, I think, is right. He said that Satan is AI. That the Antichrist <laughs> is AI. Yep. That it's going to solve all of our problems. It's going to give us everything that we want, and that's going to that's that's I, I feel like that was such yep. a such a great theory, you know. <laughs> I don't want it to be true though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. I'm just I was like, oh man, this this lines up uh, too much because if you think about it, like I just don't think it could be one world leader. Like there's never going to be that kind of unification amongst all you know people like we just see how uh fractured we are yeah. like everywhere like all around the world like we just yes we get moments of like some disaster we kind of pull together but even now it's just been so fractured so i just i see that being like the technology the technology just yeah. coming in and oh, i'll take over this for you i know this is hard you know i'll just spit this for you with no effort you yeah. know and it's just like it'll make us feel like we're in control because it'll solve our problems yeah. for us It'll solve all the world's problems. But like I said, we're going to be in a weird situation where we're going to get everything that we want. We're not going to have feel a sense of meaning or danger or whatever. That's not a good place to be uh, for human. It sounds like it is, but we need that. So it's going to be really weird. You see people struggle with just retirement. This is a big deal, by the way. When people retire... There's a very, very it's, a lot of them are very challenged because yeah. they're 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 like, okay, well, I don't work anymore. A lot of them get depressed or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, what's that going to be like when we're not so I think, needed? What's going to pull you Justin, out of bed in the morning? Yeah, I mean, I think what Justin said is is right. I think that we are going to start reverting back to our old way. I mean, we're going to see this cycle. I think. Yeah. I think we we just happen to be living at an interesting time when we're actually going to see it kind of almost start over a little bit. Where I mean, and the example of that is what they're doing right now in the schools. Yep. Because teachers are having to combat this this new technology, their kids could so easily have a term paper written for them. The only way they can do that is handwrite it in person. You know, I mean, let's talk like a utopian like 
or a optimistic, more optimistic kind of outlook on this is maybe like the technology actually solves a lot of the bigger problems, right? Like all of the things like in terms of like our interactions, like maybe like the friction between countries, like uh, travel, like, uh, and now we just focus on like, it's more like prairie living, you know, it's like, we're, we're back to like just handwriting everything. We're, we're in the community together. We're churning butter. Well, the technology just takes the, care of like, the older else. I get, the more I think the Amish, probably had something figured out a little bit, you know, with Dude, how they you know, I, I really want to interview Ty Lopez for that exact reason. Now I caught a, cause he lived with them, right? For, he like, did two for like two or three years. And he actually talks a little bit. It was in uh it was the interview with uh, Graham Stefan. I, I think it was Graham Stefan that was interviewing him. And I actually have never listened to Ty Lopez longer than a, you know, 90 second infomercial that you see him ever. Cause he's a massive internet marketer. Mm -hmm. And actually listening to him talk for like 10 minutes, I was interested. I was actually very interested um, in him and his kind of story. And he's got a really unique perspective of making tons and tons of money. And then also having lived with the Amish and you hear him kind of compare that and say, you know, I don't, I don't know if uh, I'm happier now than I was when I lived with them. There's a, there's a lot of things that, you know, when you get to kind of mm. have the opportunity to live in both extremes, like I have flying around private jets, yeah. having the fast cars, having all the money that could buy anything I want. And then also being so disconnected it, like, like they are from all the technology. Yeah, He's like, they were the, you know, they're the happiest people I've ever met in my life. He's yeah. like, I've never, wow. he was talking, and I guess there's statistics on this, on the Amish, as far as like, uh, like stress, anger, Depression, anxiety. Yeah. All really it's like, low, uh, unbelievably low. He's like, it was so unheard of. He, I, he comes from a volatile family, I think is his backstory. And he's like, it's like unheard of to even raise your voice or to fight. He goes, and it's not like they don't have disagreements. They do. They just, they handle it so different. Did you know that they are, I That's forgot what age, but they leave. They leave the Amish it's community. 15 that, that rum year. stink. What's it called? I rum, can't remember, but they leave and they, they live in the modern world. For and a year, right? the vast majority of them come back. Yeah. So they go out, live however. And the vast majority of them end up returning back home. I don't know, man. It's really strange. Well, I, I think, I mean, I, I've shared on the, on this show before, like my experience of reaching the kind of financial goal I had. I mean, that was a, I mean, for 20 something years of my life, it's m much of what I thought about uh, of reaching this, this place. Rum and Springer. Then, and then I, and then I rem Rum Springer is what it's called. Mm -hmm. And then I remember for like a year you know, I was, I was numb to where, where, how I felt because it was such a big goal to get to that place. You were to just kinda, focused on it. Yeah. I was so focused on it. Then I get there and then it was like, yeah, you know, flying all over the place, the Vegas, the gambling, the what, whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and, and I did that for like a year and it took at least a salt, which is interesting that they do that. I think it's a year that they do that. Like, yeah. and well, after that year or so of kind of doing everything that I wanted to, what a so learning experience! I'm over the I was so unhappy. Yeah. I was the most unhappy. Like how wild is that? Like not like I was kind of unhappy. I was like, if I remember a period in my life when I was the most unhealthy and I felt the worst about myself, it was when I reached the place that I thought I wanted to go mm -hmm. so bad. Like that's wild. Yeah. It's an empty shell. Yeah, we need. You know what? Ha human behavior. Here's what happens when you're left with like. Where you don't, you don't, you're not needed in the sense that you don't have to work, you don't have to really have challenges. What you're left with is hedonism, mm -hmm. and this is where people start to really indulge and indulge and indulge in hedonism, and that's a very that's a bottomless pit, and it ends really poorly. We see this with celebrities and people level, you know, just unlimited access to money and sex and drugs and whatever, and what ends up happening to them. So I don't know. I don't know what this is going to potentially... I think that's the danger is my point, though. I'm not necessarily thinking that the danger is we're going to have, uh, you know, AI machines, you know, trying to kill us or attack us or anything like that. I think the danger is going to be we're going to get... Everything we want. All this stuff that yeah. we want, oh, yeah. all of our problems solved, work done for us, all this stuff done, and then we're going to be left with, like, so, depression, anxiety, what's going on? We need more drugs. We need more of this. Why am I still, you know, whatever... And you, you're what you say, Adam, about the plugged and unplugged. What I think that's going to look like is people who devote themselves to spirituality and people that continue down this path of hedonism. Because I can't think of another answer. Mm -hmm. If you don't have to work, if you don't have to challenge yourself, if everything's done for you, if you, 
if you outsource your thinking, because you think about this right now, you yeah. need to learn how to write, learn how to do math, learn how to do this stuff. But if in the future, like what's the use of learning this stuff when it's outsourced and the answer is there for you, um, I think I, the answer is probably going to be like a spiritual practice. Otherwise, what? Like, what are you going to do? Yeah. I, I don't know. know. I mean, up until now. Creative, creative VR world where you plug yourself into a simulation and give yourself challenges. Maybe that's where we're at now. No, yeah. I, I, it's already happened. I know? mean, up until now, I didn't see this happening in our lifetime. I, I, I believe that we are heading in this direction. But up until now, I, I couldn't quite see how it was going to unfold where yeah. I feel like for the first time I, I, I have what I think is a clear picture of like what it's going to start to look like. And it is in that direction of being unplugged. Exactly what motivates you to yeah. be plugged in or unplugged like okay i i, I can't speak if that's a, a spiritual practice versus somebody who is that is chasing hedonism i don't know if that's exactly necessarily what's going to be the divide so much as it is there is going to be people who that, reject it that who reject it and choose to live a life that is in real like meeting people and touching other humans in real life and interacting and there's going to be other people that choose to do it the other way. And and there'll probably be pros and cons to both, right? There's mm -hmm. going to be some huge advantages to living in this virtual world where you 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 only die virtually or you only you the risks that you take or and the consequences that you have are only virtually so you're you're more willing mm -hmm. to do crazier stuff maybe or you can hit pleasure sensors at a faster rate and get those dopamine hits at a different level than what you can in real life. So there's going to be positives that are also you wouldn't have half of the world plugged in. But there's going to be the other half, I think. It's that, happening in our lifetime. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It's happening so I fast. believe that now. I didn't I, believe it before. I believed it was coming. But now I'm like, God damn, this I mean, is going to speed it up. I mean, I already see like, how there's way more people that are uncomfortable in their own skin, you know? And uh, I feel like, too, this was somewhat predictive with, with World of Warcraft. Like, it's so immersive in, in the community. Like, people would just seriously just stay on, on this video game and stay home and order in and all they wanted to do was hang out in this world because they could be somebody else. They could be this other thing, this person, this whatever they created. Uh, they created their own reality within this sphere. And it was interesting for me to like observe like how that's trickling into real world, like how people want to be called a furry or, or whatever it is. Oh, they want to be this other thing. It's, it's reality. You know, yeah. nobody wants to talk about this. But it's like, you know, like, when are we going to acknowledge that this is like yeah. a real, a real thing that's, well, that's an issue? Well, I think it's moving too fast for us to do that. But anyway, <laughs> we got to, we got to mention one of our sponsors, Ned, which actually, um, a good conversation in regards to that is uh, the, the topic of inflammation. Inflammation is interesting. A lot of people think it's bad, not realizing that inflammation is actually a very necessary signal. For example, it signals muscle growth repair. If you completely block inflammation, you can end up with uh, diseases, joint uh, degeneration, uh, injury, that kind of stuff. So it's always a balancing act with inflammation. Well, cannabinoids, so cannabinoids are compounds found in the hemp plant. So Ned makes a uh, CBD rich and cannabinoid rich hemp oil. Cannabinoids regulate inflammation in a balanced way. So it doesn't hammer inflammation like ibuprofen or NSAIDs, um, it regulates it. So if your inflammation is too high, it brings it down to kind of a nice normal, but not down so low where you get negative effects. So it's got this wonderful, you know, anti-inflammatory effect without like a lot of the negatives. And uh, there's a lot of research right now into cannabinoids and inflammation. They're finding it helps with irritable bowel syndrome, you know, chronic joint pain, back pain, headaches, like all the, the types of issues that we get with a dysregulated uh, inflammatory system. So Good product. How, how would you how would you tell somebody to have have insight on the the inflammation if it's negative or positive? Well, you don't pain, understand what I'm saying. Like so, like pain, so inflammation is uh, is part of the pro muscle building process, so it's a necessary evil and a good thing. And the, but then there's a point of when it's hindering potentially muscle growth or progress. So the average person, how would you explain that in layman's terms for them to to be able to, like, is this good or bad inflammation? Yeah, good question. I think what I'm talking about more is systemic inflammation. So do you feel chronically stiff? Do you feel like, like just overall joint pain or chronic joint pain or 
kind of mild headaches or do you find that your gut is super sensitive because it tends to be inflamed? Um, you know, do you move around in a way where you just don't feel loose, you feel really stiff? Well, then you might have uh, some dysregulated inflammation. Sometimes you can see in people's skin where their skin looks inflamed and that can also be dysregulated. Now, ideally, you'd want to look at diet, sleep, lifestyle, because there's a reason that you have dysregulated inflammatory um, you know, signals. However, cannabinoids are interesting because the way that they operate is they're like a light, they're like a dimmer switch on a light switch. So it doesn't turn the light on or off, but it does regulate the light to keep it from getting too bright or too dark. So cannabinoids do this with uh, your immune system as well. If you have a depressed immune system, it can actually stimulate immune activity. If you have autoimmune issues where the immune system is too active, it actually can bring it down. So really interesting. And, um, you know, cannabinoids are pretty, this is why it's one of those, those are one of those things. It's like, it helps so many different things, um, is because it's, uh, it helps regulate, not necessarily tamp things down or hammer things up no. anyway, pretty cool. So you guys have heard me talk about the Colorado experience, uh, excuse me, experiment on previous episodes. Is that Casey, Do you Vider, remember that Casey Vider one? Yeah. So I got to send, I'm going to send, uh, there's a, there's a picture that I, uh, I found of the Colorado experiment. I'm going to send this picture to the, Doug. Remind the famous, me, yeah. the famous one where he's doing the d double this, bicep pose. Or so, let, Doug, let me send this to you so you can pull it up on the. This is where he gained uh, like twenty to yeah. fifty pounds. No, oh, I mean, How many? So, pounds I, of muscle? so okay, we've talked about this actually multiple times. So, why bring it up again? What's the deal? Because I'm just reading more about it, oh. and it's so. So, here's a picture of Casey Vieter from May 1st to May 29th, and it's wild because he gained sixty. And this was at a university. And, uh, so, I mean, there were scientists there. It's all verified. He gained 63 pounds of lean body mass in that short period of time. I just think it's wild that this is even possible, but it's a confirmed study. Look at the difference in the guy. May 1st to May 29th, now, 63 what, So to me, month. what this confirms though is what we talked about. Pounds. Like, uh, so do, is he, is he's on anabolics here? Yes. He was a pro bodybuilder. So I would assume so. So, I mean, I, but I mean, I, I mean, I think the last time we brought this up, I talked about how, and I think, of course, I had people like, oh, blah, 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 no, you couldn't. I'm like, I wish I, I, and I've got it actually somewhere. I've de I know I definitely have some old pictures of like where I made some crazy swings. When you take someone who's been lifting for a really long time, and I would be a perfect example of doing this right now because I'm so out of my bodybuilding condition. Yeah. Um, but I, and I, and Katrina always trips out. She's like, it's so crazy. You like, you tighten the diet up in one or two mm. weeks and you get after your weight training and it's like your body changes. It's like, well, that's because of all the work I did before. Muscle memory. Yeah. And that's so, what I'm trying to highlight. Here. So it doesn't take nearly as much effort and work. And so, and we get, and I like you bringing this up because I get, I always get these, these kids that will send me like these before and after pictures mm. that will be something not even as ridiculous as this. And they're like, how much bullshit is this? And yeah. I'm like, well, it's not actually that crazy if you have an advanced lifter it's just not likely and how depleted <laughs> was he people. yeah yeah i mean it's, it's definitely not likely for a a, a non-lifter to get that kind of results at all like someone who's just starting like you're not going to put 60 pounds of muscle on absolutely not but it is not weird for a guy like myself who's been as high as 240 and damn near mostly muscle of that who now walks around at 225 maybe 180 in muscle so you're talking about I got 60 less pounds of muscle on yeah. me right now. Now, I don't know if I'd get all 60 back in one month. Probably not that. But I guarantee that I can make a, a crazy enough like before and after that people would think Yeah, so what bullshit. you have here, and this the reason why I'm highlighting this is this is a, this is a perfect storm. So Casey Viator was a pro bodybuilder, got injured, or I don't remember what the case was, got sick, lost tons of muscle, okay? So he had tons of muscle. And by the way, Casey Viator is known as being one of the most gifted bodybuilders of all time. He won some of the top bodybuilding championships at 18 in the 70s. You can look at his pictures of this guy when he's 18. It was insane. So he had tons of muscle. Right. Lost so add in the fact that he's also a kind of a genetic freak. Genetic freak. Lost a lot of muscle, probably on anabolics. Goes in and trains for a month, and that's what happened to him, which is insane. <laughs> it's crazy what what you know what the perfect storm. Well, and to me, that that's the difference of why I don't think I could make. I don't think I'm a genetic freak at all when it comes to building muscle. So, but I do know that I put enough work in that I could show a dramatic right. difference. Yeah. If I had crazy muscle building, if I had that bodybuilder look, even when I was 16 years old, yeah. combined with my experience of lifting and bodybuilding, I absolutely think I can make a crazy swing yeah. like that. So, wild, right? It is. It is wild, and it, and it, it highlights what a lot of these people do in the marketing world, right? So, Oh, they'll take a bodybuilder. They'll make them 
lose muscle and gain body fat, and then they'll make them gain it again, and that's their before and after. Yeah, and so you know when, when these kids send these these photos, it's like, well, first of all, my response is always, it doesn't matter. You shouldn't be comparing yourself to some random genetic freak stranger. <laughs> But if you're if you you you're sending this to me to get validation for me from the, me tell you that it's not possible, I'm not gonna tell you that it's possible. Yeah. I've seen crazier shit, so it's very possible to see these dramatic shifts. And the more the more experience, the more time under the iron, years, decades that you've done, the easier this becomes. Yep. We've talked about this before. One of the coolest parts about being in my 40s now. Okay, yeah, I'm not as agile and fast and. You know, I don't look as good maybe as I did when I was 18, 19 years old. But the nice part is I put so many years on the iron that I keep it. Yeah, yeah it's eat much you easier. Can bounce to, back. Yeah, it's much easier to keep easy. it. And then if I do switch gears into like really wanting to get after it, like my body responds really nice mm -hmm. compared to what it did when I, I mean, do you guys not remember being 21 and like hitting the gym and diet as hard as you could to see incremental change you know how hard in your it was physique? for me to how hard it was for me to be over 185 at like 12 percent body fat yeah now it's like that's what i would be if i stopped working out i mm -hmm. think it's probably yeah i'd be so it's like it's like it's not permanent right there's no such thing as permanent results pretty close so yeah so for the young men and women that listen to this podcast stay the course man and i tell you what it's, it's like in, it's like investing yeah, yeah the more time and you put in the you easier keep, it gets keep in, you start investing young and putting a little bit away and being consistent mm -hmm. and you know what you may not be a millionaire in a year or two but give it time and believe, I don't care what you do for a profession. If you were consistent with being disciplined like that and saving, it's the same thing with like building muscle right. and building a physique. It'll pay off. All right. So I'm going to change topics here. On a previous episode, when we were talking about the Twitter files, um, Adam, you said that with Twitter, you're like, I don't think there's any nefarious like stuff going on. But now <laughs> we see that the FBI literally paid Twitter $3.5 million directly to censor pages that they wanted. So there is now direct link. Directly paid. Directly. Yeah. yeah, I think I already admitted being wrong about this, no? No, I'm just saying. I think I already admitted it, this was one of the ones where I was like, oh boy, was I off because- oh, Dude, how crazy is, is that? Egregious. This that's is like, insane. That's direct. They're literally telling them, do so this the part, and pay the, you. The part of this that I think is the most interesting or the, the craziest part is the lack of outrage. Yeah. Like, I mean, the the amount of outrage and craziness that I saw over the last two and a half years and families fighting and, mm -hmm. I mean, just the crazy shit that we've seen in the last two years. And we find out the government uh, killed fucking JFK and, is, and <laughs> yeah. paid yeah. Twitter to manipulate freaking uh, uh, the, the news and information we were receiving. And people are like... Nothing. Still turn a blind eye? Just chilling. Yeah. Just ne a normal day. Is it okay? What the fuck. So okay. is this more on on the sort of well, uh, my team kind of got what it wanted yeah. out of this, and so you know if they did kind of bend the rules a little, that uh, yeah, you know it's whatever it is, it's par for the course. That, it goes both ways. That's what you have to be careful when your of course quote unquote your guy is you know in power doing things. Always ask yourself, how would I feel if the other side, If you just switch it out. Because the next what, day. whatever they get away with now is what they'll get away with tomorrow. And people are in and out of office. People are in and out of power. That's so weird to it's me to so feel scary. that way. Because even if my guy won from the cheating, I still would be like, this, this is, is like this is this is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy. This is dangerous that we that they have that kind of control and power and that we're okay with it. Like that it's wild to me. Dude. And I'm not I'm definitely not a Trump, you know, supporter fan, whatever, but like uh, to him to be able to um he had to go through trials <laughs> to prove the fact that he wasn't colluding with people and you know all of this stuff and and gets absolved of all that, but like this is like deliberate. Yeah. This this is proof in uh factual data. Yeah, we'll see what happens with it. I'm wondering what what's going to happen with it or is both sides playing like, yeah, whatever, because they both use this. You know what I mean? They both do this and they both play this game. So I'm wondering if that's why nobody's really hammering it.
I, I mean, I think that's. I yeah. think you're right. I think that there's. I mean, both both camps are guilty like they both this. have their things that they do. And but I mean, I just feel like that's. This is the wrong thing. The thing to be outraged is that it, that it's that's just happening. Who cares left right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That who did it more? Who did it less? Like I don't even care about no. that. It's yeah. the, it's the fact that government. We, and, we cannot have this. And by the way, if you don't, and for sure, I mean, I was somebody who didn't believe it. If they did it to Twitter, they did it to Facebook, they did it to uh, they did it to all of them. YouTube, they did it to all of them. Yeah, why would they just do Twitter? Yeah, yeah. no, they did it, they did it to all of them. <laughs> yeah, like they that. they ain't opening up their books. Yeah, for you to come in and look at you know who's the benefactors. Yeah, uh, man, wild, wild. So it's so crazy. To me, yeah. are you? Uh, by the way, have you? I heard that uh, Twitter usage. Uh, by real people is up. Yeah, it is. And subscribers is up. Yeah, it is. is that, oh, wow. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's getting more popular. It's getting more popular. And um, and they're doing more. I mean, they're doing this with less people. Remember, he, they laid off a lot of people. So more with less. Almost half the staff. With no? this, which well, is we kinda, knew that. That's sort of his pedigree, right? Like, he, he's done that to so many businesses before. I so, know. you know, when I when I shared that open, uh, open AI uh, um, post, the Instagram, the AI generated yeah. post, I had a couple DMs from people telling me that Elon is responsible for the the software that originally created really? that. Really? Did you know any of that? Mm. Can you can you do a little digging for me? I haven't even had a chance to so, you know fact a, check is me. He an alien? <laughs> I actually, think he is. that was actually the comment the person said yeah. afterwards. Because he started out that, at PayPal, right? And so yeah. that that was like, I mean, it's just like so much he's been involved in. I, I know that yeah. uh, obviously software engineers and people around him. But. Yeah, supposedly he's responsible for some of the code that helped kick this off in this direction. By the way, did you guys see who responded? So you saw his poll, right? Should I step down as CEO and have somebody replace? And they said yes. Yeah. So the poll voted yes. Yeah. Did you see who responded to that? Do you remember the dude Snoop on- Snoop Dogg? No. Oh, oh, oh you mean- uh, The dude from MySpace. My yeah. Tom? <laughs> yeah, that Tom. was a real tweet. The real guy who founded MySpace. I saw that. Was it real? Yeah, it was yeah. real. He posted a picture of himself, Bro. you know, the one at the desk. Bro, where can I just like, say yeah, something? The famous right? one where yeah. he's like this? Like, if if Tom... Who doesn't love Tom, If dude? the inventor of MySpace ends up running Twitter... Bro, I, Tom never I'm fucked done. with us. <laughs> no. You know, like... He let us do our thing. Yeah, he's just like, here's a thing for you guys to hang out. <laughs> yeah. And then there was no strings, <laughs> yeah, you know? Dude. And then he got muscled out. It, could, what, whatever happened to him? I don't know, but he commented under it. He says, I'll take the job. <laughs> so I'm like, holy shit. I want to know cool. where he's at. Or he's hella old now, right? He's got to be old now. Somebody's got to resurrect MySpace, I feel. You know? oh, Isn't yeah. it still, doesn't it still exist? I don't think I so. Think I think it so. does. I think, yeah, I, think, I think you can go on it. How you guys, you I tried it because I had my old band on there and I tried to like get some of our songs. Sal's a better Googler when it comes files. to stuff. Yeah, I'm just Google digging it into it. I mean, you get into these articles. So OpenAI is artificial official intelligence research laboratory uh, based up in, I believe, San Francisco. It was founded by, in 2015 by Sam Altman, Elon Musk, and wow. others. Wow. So he is okay. involved. I don't know to what extent. I mean, I didn't know he was even involved. So Stop that's... stop doing shit, Elon. <laughs> that's what it is. This per, these, I had actually himself. multiple people. He's a robot. After I did that, they DM me he's, personally he's an alien, and dude. said that, and it wasn't just one person, so that's why I thought this must, might be, maybe this is true, that he had a hand in the code that wrote the original like That's open wild. AI stuff. Well, speaking wow. of speaking of super smart, uh, I just learned about and I'm gonna maybe try this peptide called Dihexa. <laughs> have you guys heard of this? No, tell Okay, so I think I have so do you guys this. know what BDNF? You've heard me talk about mm -hmm. brain derived neurotropic. It's like miracle grow for the brain. Apparently, this peptide dihexa is like 10 times more powerful than BDNF for the brain. Really? So using this peptide dramatically increases you know, neural connections, uh, brain cell growth, brain repair. So this is like the limitless peptide? They call it that. Yeah. They Do call they it really? That. That's what they call it. So, I mean, I, I've been reading about I've never tried so it. so glad you're willing to be the guinea pig. Oh, I'm so 100%. <laughs> so I want to get I know. <laughs> just, that one actually, though, I'm like, <laughs> dude, anything and everything. Bro, Help I am brain. down to try I whatever, as long as I'm being monitored or whatever. <laughs> but here's what, look, look, this is what the what it says, the possible benefits. Uh, improvement in critical thinking, production of dopamine and noradrenaline, mental stamina, enhanced articulation, improved circulation, accelerated wound healing. I mean- Goes, wow, increased muscle growth. Accelerated wound healing. Sold. Oh. Uh, yeah, so who knows? I mean, Interesting. I may when, are you, when, are you, when are you starting it? Um, I don't know. They're going to send it to me. Can you? Yeah, through, this is through can we make it a thing for you to give the audience and us a they kind of a oh hundred percent weekly or biweekly yeah, update yeah. on yeah. what? So you this know, is from this is from our our partners at mphormones.com. 
Um, and if you, you know, you can go on there and fill out a form and, you know, see if you can try peptides or whatever. And they do hormone replacement therapy too. But um, yeah, I, I, now I may take it and not feel good, right? I may not want more dopamine and noradrenaline. It might make me feel shitty or whatever. Yeah. So we'll mm. see. But from what I've heard from people who take it, they're like, dude, I'm sharp. I feel so like articulate. I'm like, oh, this is going to be weird. Oh, wow. You know? Yeah, well, I can't cool. wait. I or can't. maybe I'll just become more annoying. That's there are some interesting side effects or potential ones anyway. Oh, Doug's reading that oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, reduce the attention the span. The punch bowl. Oh, God. Reduce Irritability. attention span to the guy who can't sit mood in a meeting for five minutes. Oh, God. Change Irritability. of taste. Mood swings. Oh, oh my God. You're going to become Adam. Oh. <laughs> 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 Worse, Adam who can't sit at me for five minutes. Yeah. Uh, well, well you'll okay. Get the wor- the worst uh, traits of us both. Okay, well, now this makes me nervous. <laughs> I know. So, well, Can I'll know. Right? The I'll, worst traits I'll of me know, and Sal. I'll oh, know my because God, dude. because oh, God. you fuckers won't let me get away. With it. Tell me, <laughs> Sal, oh, stop yeah, taking yeah. that shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I'll yeah. be the first. To well, tell that's you the for dopamine. Sure. So more dopamine can cause that. However, with people with attention deficit disorder, listen to him selling it. Then him selling more dopamine is a good thing. I'm just hey, I haven't even tried it. Hey, yeah. All I know is somebody's got to be the. Experiment. All I know is is I'm going to try. It. Yeah, I'm just. Hey, I'm glad you're willing to be the guinea pig. So I can't. Yeah. Wa- I can't wait to hear how <laughs> everything goes down. So we'll see. Another hey. cool. More. Uh, I got some other cool science. Did you know they're connecting obesity to hair loss? What? It actually. Yeah. Really? That becoming obese actually um, can contribute to hair loss in people. So I donn't know that. What. Why it has you know, to do with the, the stem cells? You're not, can, you're not, can, un, you're not getting uh, lack of nutrients. Right? <laughs> it's, 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 it's something to do with that. It's no, no, <laughs> no depletion. Yeah, of, there's, uh, <laughs> obesity accelerates calories. health. Okay, here we go. Obesity accelerates hair thinning by stem cell centric converging mechanisms. Do you guys know what that means? Yeah, something to do with the flux capacitor. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I don't know what Ramazones. that means either. I guess stem cell inflammatory signals are induced by obesity, which then represses organ regeneration signals. So it slows down because hair has to regenerate, right? Has to, the, the, the stem cells have to regenerate and, and continue to grow because hair. Because you're so fat, you can't do it? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, that's one way to put it. It's a hard time squeezing through the skull. Or no. <laughs> <laughs> hey. That's some science there. Hey. Have you ever seen that before? It's have you ever a, seen like like strange? I want, I want that written out in a PowerPoint. <laughs> like Adam's <laughs> just teaching people that. <laughs> He's got, hey, he draws a picture. <laughs> this is your skull so, your skull's so fat, we can't get the hair... The hair follicles can't get through. <laughs> we got to get leaner, bro. Your hair can't get through all that fat. Oh, man. You ever meet somebody, though? Kind of makes sense. I got a fat face, bro. Dude, you, know? you ever meet um, people, though, with like, like where they store body fat, like in strange places? Like I, I there was this guy, they used to have this guy that worked for me. And I swear the back of his head was like, he had a nice thick, like, could, like, like a little, like, Ugh, yeah, know, like a hot dog package. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he wasn't Wrinkle, nasty. Just, he wasn't super overweight, but yeah, he had like he stored. Yeah, yeah, like, that. what's the evolutionary benefit of that? <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, know what yes. I guess if he falls it's back, place to store it. You know, yeah. he's all he's all good. One of you brought up. I think it was I think it was you, Sal, who brought up the all the NFT lawsuits that are going. Yeah, on. Yeah, there's are a bunch you, of lawsuits going is on. It, okay, so what's the latest on that? Because I haven't seen anything pop up since you said that, and I was I'm super curious. It was the it was the um. The the freaking board ape one, right? It is. So Madonna, Jimmy Fallon, and in, in, are included in this. But Steph Curry, because he was a, a big proponent of so that. So there's this class action lawsuit basically saying which so you also have Steph Curry, Tom Brady, and more. There's a class action lawsuit filed in federal court that is targeting these people over pushing the board ape yacht club. In other words, I think the lawsuit is saying that they came out to pump it. And then dump it. It's like pumping up with stocks. Poor Tom Brady, dude. Mm. I know. What a he's, year for he's that not guy. had a good year. What, what a rough year for Man. that. I mean, you lose six hundred million to the freaking uh, SBX thing or whatever like that. <laughs> oh. You lose a you lose a wife. You're having the worst football season of you're your career, sued. and now they're gonna sue you on top Damn, of that. Oh, his God. his contract he just lost to the Niners. Oh, oh man, yeah. what a yeah, mop the field with him. Poor it's guy. Great. I don't know, man. All I remember suicide watch. For all Tom I remember Brady. is two years ago. People talking about NFTs like they were just like, this is how you make money. Quiet. I know. Quiet right now. I feel so. It is so quiet on the the Instagrams. (laughs) You don't see no. You ever seen that one meme? It's like, uh, you know, how crypto bros before and they got like a BMW steering wheel or whatever. And then after they're like holding on to the 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 seat in the front of the bus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) My favorite is though, I posted this one, the one that was like, uh, like it was like the guy was driving some beat up car and then he had like a, it was a cut, cut out of a paper, like Mercedes 
Mercedes symbol. Oh, his NFT Mercedes, Mercedes there. Mercedes yeah, and then it was like a coffee cup that had Starbucks on there. It was like all like all fake. So, and they, yeah, yeah. so sad. It's so, it, but I mean, it was weird, right? Because like a few years ago, a couple of years ago, NFTs were super expensive. Tennis shoes, stamps, baseball cards, like crazy collectible. Like it was all the signs of like, yeah, shit's going to crash pretty soon. We're all there. And so many people don't want to believe it. That's like a uh, what a well, what a study in human psychology, right? Speaking of things like you don't want to believe, um, so uh, Michael Jackson was like my one of my favorites of all time, mm. right? And like the I I didn't even want to watch that documentary with everything where they're all coming out and yeah, like, yeah. talking about you know the uh, you know tough to watch when you're dude, a fan. It's terrible, right? Because like he was just he was one of the greatest of all time. But I heard this theory recently that like was just interesting and compelling enough to be like, I wonder if that's true. Um, and I don't know if you guys have heard it or not, but uh, the doctor that actually was uh, put in prison because um, I think that they ruled that he was responsible for his death because oh, he overdosed him. He gave him that anesthesia to, sl to sleep. <laughs> yeah, to sleep uh, oh yeah, indefinitely. Um, he was saying that uh, his father at a young age of like 12 – wanted to keep his his voice like high and all oh, that like it was going wow. through changes and chemi chemically castrated him basically by giving him all these like hormones hormones and, and like over dust him with like the hormone uh and so that way like basically it i don't know like this is all total speculation because you know how they used to do that for like choir singer uh the, boys il and, castrato that, that's, il where, castratos, the, that's yeah. where the word that's a thing Mm -hmm. They used to do this in midi I don't know. Look up Il Castrato, Doug. Castrato. What? So it's spelled away. This was a thing? Bro. Yeah. These were children. This. These were boys. They sang, I believe, for the for the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And they would castrate them so that their so voice like, is like that. Yeah. Forever. What? You didn't know yeah. that? No. Yeah. And this was I when when did this happen? Was this in like the sixteen hundreds? Oh yeah, fifteen hundreds. Yeah, it was. You know, well. Yeah, I think it was uh, perhaps in the eighteenth century. So that'd be what the seventeen hundreds. Yeah. So a male singer in the eighteenth century castrated before puberty what to prevent the his soprano or contralto voice range from changing. Yeah. Because I mean, there was that one phase. Remember when Michael Jackson was? He was starting to kind of get a little bit of a lower voice, and like he had just kind of worked his way out of the Jackson Five and. Uh, I don't know. I just remembered that. And then all of a sudden he's back to like, ah, like his, his voice <laughs> was high again. That's crazy. Dude. dude. What kind of fucked up shit do we do to people? I, I did not even know that was that? a, I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. Like how twisted are you yeah. to even think it, of that? They were called Il Castrato and they were, they were celebrated. Like, oh, there are these wonderful singers. Here they so are. Now, they have the voices of angels. <laughs> That's yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, were, were, exactly. were we manipulating these young boys into thinking that they, they volunteered to do it or they would be willing to do it? Or did you? Oh, no, they were they were part of the, I guess, I think it was the church. Maybe Doug can can look this up. I'm sure they were manipulating And they, they were taken care of and like, they, this is what they did. And so it was like, it was an honor. That's what I'm saying. So they were celebrated and they, yeah. and they, and they thought that this was a, a so they would did it willingly potentially well i mean they were children well i know but yeah. my as point is they, were, child they were manipulated into believing yes. that it was a, a okay or Doug, do they say where they, 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 like thing. was it for the church or was it just uh yeah say you know maybe origins <laughs> i don't know for the church for That's the church yeah. <laughs> yeah it's the roman catholic let us see here i don't know that's why uh, the Roman. No, no, that's what it said up there at the top. Why he's that's looking for that, uh, Sal? Why don't you do our other partners? Our other partner. Oh, Organifi. Let's talk about Organifi a little bit. Um, I got a great message from one of our listeners who took our advice and used the green juice while traveling because uh, they said that they tend to get digestive issues because they're mm -hmm. not getting enough vegetables. And like you know, I didn't believe you guys, but I started using the green juice every day, and I feel like way better. That's how I use it. You know what I want feedback from? Yeah, those is, travel packs are the best mm -hmm. for that. We've had several uh, live callers that we that have heard us talk about titrating your caffeine and pulling back. And one of the like you know neatest things that I found like using all the different supplements and partners we have was the red juice yeah. in, in with helping me do that. And so I know we've given that advice. To several people what i haven't heard back is people that actually have taken the advice and then how well that's worked for other people i'd love to hear that so if you're listening and you're somebody who has and you're tried, trying to wean off caffeine yeah and you try to come off the caffeine and you've used the red juice to replace that 
how much success that you had with that. I'd love to hear from uh, our audience because that was a big, big one for me for sure. Before we're done, actually, I wanted to make sure that we bring up because we started to do this and we want to stay consistent with shouting somebody yes, out in their please. handle. Uh, so I wrote down one was raw form underscore functional underscore fit. Now this guy, um, somebody sent his handle over to me initially and I started following him because he does like a lot of really interesting, cool stuff with like May spells and with, um, lots of like Viking training and stuff where he's like swinging around like homemade, like spike maces wow. and axes so and like really like cool shit you can't mess up <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's just like at, i mean it's just it's it's fun to to watch and see kind of like what he comes up with but it's it's a good follow well, that's great i'll check that out check this out you're not what you eat you're what you digest when you break down your food your proteins into amino acids your fats into essential fatty acids and other fatty acids your carbohydrates you turn it into glycogen you need digestive enzymes to do all of that there's a company called Masszymes that makes digestive enzymes for fitness-oriented people. So you utilize more of the food that you eat for the stuff that you want, like muscle, strength, performance, fat loss. Go check this company out. Go to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump. Then use the code mind pump 10 for 10% off any order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Sharon from Michigan. Hi, Sharon. How can we help you? Hi. How are you guys? Good. Great. I'm a little starstruck, so thanks for taking my call. You got it. Um, been listening to you for a couple months, and you guys are awesome. Thank You're you. totally down to earth. Um, so I don't know if they send you the question, but um, just brief background about me. Like I started like really weight training in two, like 2013, 2014. Um, when I met Nicole Wilkins, like she's, she was a good friend of my husband's and we were dating and she's a good friend of ours now. Um, and, you know, had a lot of great newbie gains in the first two years. And then um, I'm not as strict. I don't ever want to be as strict as I was with diet before. Um, but I normally train on a five to six day split. And lately it's been taking me like, you know, cause I'll do something else in between. I'm trying to take a rest day. So that five, six day split turns into like 10 or 12 days to get it all done. And I was wondering if I was thinking, I did purchase MAPS Anabolic. Um, I was wondering if doing a three day full body like that is still as effective. Oh, hell yes. It's probably more effective. You're going to, yeah, exactly. Especially considering this, the challenges that you're having with completing the split. I think you're going to see uh, tremendous results from it. Yeah. You, okay. And those days in between, you can still do mobility work. You could still do activity. You know, if you want to go to the gym and just be active, go for a walk, go for a walk, stretch, whatever. It's totally fine. But that kind of a split tends to be better for most people, even if you're advanced. So okay. MAPS Anabolic comes with two options. Pick the advanced option because that's because you're obviously uh, not a beginner. And then do the trigger sessions on the off days. Watch what happens. Okay, because I was looking at, I wasn't going to do the initial phase of it, like the pre phase of Max. Max no, start uh, Max phase one. Anabolic. Yeah, start in okay. phase one. Yeah, you're totally phase one, three days a week. Uh, try doing two to three trigger sessions on the off days consistently. You'll mm -hmm. know within the first two weeks uh, that this is going to work well for you. Did I did I read you're 50? I actually, today I'm 51. Oh, so. holy cow. Happy <laughs> birthday. Happy birthday. You, you look incredible. Are you you. A, I would have never guessed that. Are you a vampire like Doug? Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do I do sleep like eight hours a night, but um, it's the best birthday present ever. So, because I think you guys are just great and you're like, you're not full of bullshit. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, We're gonna, you know, after MAPS Anabolic, I think you should follow MAP Symmetry. I think you'd like that one as well, especially with your experience exercising. Um, okay. Yeah, the single joint, the the unilateral type exercises, it'll really balance your body out and, and sculpt your body, especially after MAPS Anabolic. So we'll make sure that you follow Symmetry afterwards. I'll send that over to you. Thank you. You got Thank it. you. All right. So you think I can still build muscle with I, Anabolic? You, you are going to be you're, blown you're, away. You're going to blow, you're, yeah. you're going to, have you ever trained in the like one to five rep range for a few weeks? You ever trained like, like just for pure strength? I ha well, I have with shoulders because I always want like bigger shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> but you're you're gonna love this program. Yeah, you're phase gonna, one, phase yeah. one in particular is gonna blow you away. 
Okay. Yeah. All and, right. And if we don't talk to you after that, I, after symmetry, I would go aesthetic. Oh, yeah. Especially since you made a comment about your shoulders, and because that program's all about sculpting. But symmetry it's, and yeah. then aesthetic. You yep. got it. Yep. Run that. Run it just like that. So we're sending you over symmetry, symmetry right now. And then, uh, and then, and your your anabolic thought process is is right on point. Yep. So you're right. So do your do anabolic, do symmetry, and then if you follow it up anything after that, follow it with aesthetic. And uh, I think the the full body training is going to do you Game well. Game changer. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm excited to try it. And thank you guys, and have a merry Christmas. Yes. Happy, Christmas. happy birthday, Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. You know, it's funny, the the type of person that gets blown away the most by switching to MAPS Anabolic is that. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. Years and years and for years. For sure. Training in a split, you know. Lots Not really of, training one to five range. Yeah. Like, oh, oh yeah. 100%. Within she's the gonna, first few weeks, she's be like, what is going and on? And the yeah. things that she's, like the split, what's happening where it takes her 12 days to get all the way through her entire yeah, split. Miss, yep. Oh, my God. Because it's going to increase frequency, focus on strength. I mean, she's going to see, I, I just hope she sticks to it and then and follow up with us because I think it's going to blow her mind. Yeah, I think the big challenge for her, and we should have told her this, is she may feel like I'm not doing enough because she's so used to doing yeah. day after day after day. It's always a psychological challenge, yeah, yep. especially when people shift to that. But yeah, it's going to do such crazy things to her body. And if you do feel that way and you want to keep going to the gym, go to the gym, just go for a walk. That's why I added go, that. Yeah, go yep. for a walk, do some mobility stuff, yeah. meditate, do some other things that are great for your health. But trust the process. You stick to the program, follow anabolic all the way through. I promise that w uh, you'll be happy. Our next caller is Owen from Alabama. Owen, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, first of all, really appreciate you taking my call. I've been a mind pump listener now for about two months, relatively new, and just can't even express how much I've learned and appreciated what you guys have done. Um, so just want to express my gratitude for that. Thanks, awesome, man. man. Right Thank on. you. Welcome to the party. So uh, a little bit about me, just to sort of frame my question and some perspective. I'm 24 years old. I'm currently getting my PhD right now in mathematics. And um, I've been a pretty consistent weightlifter now for about five to six years. Um, but before that, I was a long distance runner, uh, cross country runner in high school and uh, you know ran a marathon my senior year. But when I hit college, I really wanted to put on some size, started uh doing a lot of bodybuilding at school, tried to follow, you know, a push pull legs program, but it ended up more looking like, you know, victim to the classic, uh, prioritizing upper body, uh, as opposed to my lower body. And so after a while now, you know, fast forward four or five years, my upper body has significantly progressed more than my lower body. And, um, due to my maybe lack of desire, but I haven't really prioritized recovery with my legs. I've had some nagging injuries um, and imbalances that I haven't really been able to get control over. And so just over the past year, the imbalances have gotten increasingly worse. I've gotten some knee pain while squatting, um, have some little to no internal rotation on my hips and some hamstring tightness. And my question for you guys revolves around, you know, as I start the new year, I was hoping to have a game plan for the upcoming year, how I want to program uh, my time. And I wanted to know what your advice was for somebody who has such drastic differences. I still would ho hopefully want to improve my upper body um, and things like that, but I have my lower body lagging so far behind. I do have MAPS Prime and MAPS Anabolic, so I was wondering if you guys thought um, that would be a good uh, thing to do as the new year starts and how exactly I may modify that for my own personal uh, benefit. You you know, this is a, and you're on the right track for sure. That's what we do. We'll lay out the whole year for you. Um, this is my, one of my biggest critiques about push pull legs routines, especially for a young guy is what ends up happening is we skip the, the leg one and do a lot of push pull. And that's part of the problem. Not to mention the days that you do do legs, you probably feel crushed. A lot of times yeah. we get really sore afterwards Easily or they're overdo it. hard to push through it. This is why one of my, my favorite transitions was moving out of that type of a split and moving more to a full body where you're only doing you know, an exercise or two for your legs and you're getting out of there after you know six sets, eight sets total, and that's all you're doing. You're not doing much more than that. And so you're not as sore, you're not as exhausted to get through it. And then the frequency of hitting your legs more consistently really brings those up. 
Um, anabolic is the first one for sure. And then I would, I would run performance aesthetic and then maybe symmetry or maybe interrupt symmetry in the middle of that. What would you guys do? You know, I think we should start with symmetry and here's why, yeah. because I think anabolic is a great program, but you're, you, you mentioned the nagging pain yeah. that you have. And I the think, sim yeah, I think symmetry will help balance you out. So I would actually go map symmetry and then maps anabolic and then performance and, and then, then performance and then aesthetic. And that's the whole year, right? That's there. it. That's the whole year. And prime, you want to use the priming sessions before every workout, but symmetry is going to help a lot with the imbalances that you're suffering yeah. from for sure. Yeah. And a lot of that you'll find with the tightness, your body's just being overly protective. And so to be able to kind of isolate one side versus the other, it's going to help you kind of reveal uh, where the instability lies. And so that's something too, like, which then you can take into your priming ahead of time, really pick those very deliberate type of exercises that help kind of open that up for you. So your squat and your deadlift and everything will uh, be better impacted. Now, the only challenge is this, you did mention that you're in the PhD process for uh, mathematics, which I can only imagine is quite demanding. What does your schedule look like uh, when just normally? Forget the workout part, but what does your schedule look like with classes and, and studying? Uh, yeah, so right now I'm in, uh, right, I'm just doing research and teaching. So I actually almost always have, you know, hour or two hour chunks throughout my day where I can work out Usually whenever I want, I'm, I'm a morning workout person. I usually knock it out right away. Okay. And so I, I can, I can almost always get to the gym rel pretty much every day of the week. Okay, good. And then how's your sleep? My sleep's usually phenomenal. To be honest, I'm, I'm in bed by nine o'clock and I'm usually oh. up around six. So. We're good. We're good, good for then. You, bro. Yeah, good we're for good you. then. You're, you're, the advice we gave you is, otherwise so, I would have changed my so, advice, but I, I think we're good then. If you're, if that's what your schedule looks like and you're not overly stressed or whatever, um, then, then you're, you're totally good. What kind of research do you do for mathematics, by the way? Right now I'm, I'm in a program that's what, what, what's called pure mathematics. So I'm looking in a field called graph theory, which is really studying networks and, and the relationship between networks. Um, it's an offshoot of, of discrete mathematics. Interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. you're going to be solving the future's problems. So, so that's cool. the, okay. So the, I want to address the, the, the biggest challenge you're going to have with the advice of symmetry. So, uh, especially for a young guy who's got a lot, does a lot probably, uh, is being patient and following the program. I know you've only been listening to us for two months, so it might be a lot to ask, but trust us and trust that we know what we're doing and programming and this is where we want to go. But the, the isometric piece to the beginning of that program. It's two weeks. Yeah, is, is two weeks. Do it. It's going to serve you. It's going to feel very different than anything you've ever done and almost feel like, oh man, I'm not really doing shit and, and you're going to be tempted to want to add or do other or things. Skip that All the effort yeah. is intrinsic, so it's really what you put into it. Yeah, but it, it will serve you and, and trust the process, and it, it is a two-week process when you first get started um, that, that we we know what we're doing and you'll be okay, but I know that, that, that mental, psychologically, it's going to be the biggest challenge for you because it'll be like, what the fuck am I doing? What is this? And you're going to want to do more, but but trust it. And uh, and I promise you, if you follow the programs that we just laid out for you, did you say you sent him, or you're sending him over symmetry? Symmetry, yeah. yeah. And he's already got, I think yeah. you already have anabolic, right? Yeah, I have yeah. anabolic and split. Okay. Yeah, okay. So you, yeah, so after symmetry, go anabolic, then performance, then aesthetic, and you'll Perfect. be set. Yep. If, if, if I was to come across like um, during the program, halfway through or something like that, uh, knee pain while squatting or something like that, do you recommend any, you know, way to modify it so that way it doesn't feel like, all right, well, you know, there goes the first month of my, well, of my year start over. Well, with symmetry, that, that shouldn't be an issue, but if you do find some pain in symmetry, slow down, go lighter, um, and modify your technique so that your knee doesn't hurt, but definitely slow down and go lighter. And uh, with symmetry, that shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Start with your strong. So start with the weaker side and then copy your, your weaker side with your stronger side so that you don't do more reps with the stronger side. You could also extend the time length of doing symmetry, you know, run it again. If, if, if it's an issue that needs to be tackled and maybe avoid the five by five portion, the, the phase four, um, you know, if you are kind of like dealing with that instability and pain, um, then go know, back over, go back over yeah. again. Oh, and I'm going to, I'm actually going to have Doug give you free access to the private forum too. That way, if you do have something like this is what that forum is great for. So if you if something comes up in the middle of the year while you're doing you're following yeah. these programs that you can't figure it out, uh, 
post it in there, tag us, and then we'll get to you. Yeah, because we'll, we'll knee, knee pain, knee pain almost always comes from either the hips, hips or the or ankles, ankles or the feet. Uh, it's not the knee itself. So you probably don't have something wrong with your knee. You're probably there's probably something wrong with your stability or strength or mobility in the hips, ankle, or feet. Uh, so look there. So when you're watching your form and symmetry and you're doing your unilateral exercise, watch your form. In fact, look in the mirror. You want to watch yourself in the mirror and watch how your your knee is tracking, watch how your mm -hmm. your your body's lined up, and then try to mirror that on both sides. And you got the, you you got, and that's okay. something that Prime will help out with too. Big yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, big, big time. time. And you, the forum, this is what the forum is best used for, in my opinion. Like this, so a lot of people, this is what they'll do. They they yeah. can't they can't figure something out themselves. They post a video of them doing their squat or their deadlift or whatever it is that we're trying to address. And like, hey, I'm having knee pain. Here's my here's my squat. Can you guys help me out? And we will we will be able to see from the way yep. you squat what's probably going on and then be able to direct you on what to do. And just as much as you can, like movements like the 90-90 where we're addressing that internal rotation, like to be able to do that while you're watching TV and just make it like a, a frequent ritual. You're yeah. just constantly doing it. It doesn't you know, stress out the body in any means. It's just something that you're you're now like reprogramming the way that your body's going to stabilize. Yeah. So keep keep that doing that as much as possible. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. You got it, man. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, yeah. Keep us posted, man. Make sure you get in that forum. Yeah, I definitely will. Thank you guys. You got right it. On. Uh, yeah, the the a lot of people don't realize that with knee pain in particular. Knee pain in particular. I mean, unless you have an acute injury, right? And there's actual damage to the knee. It's almost it's it's almost always eighty five plus percent. It's foot, knee, ankle, or hip. Knee and elbow are like that. Both knee and elbow are those areas where people are like, God damn, it's not the elbow, it's not the knee, it's the the joints that are closest to it, right? Yep, so it's yep. either your your ankle or in in this case. And your one hips. thing, this is for people listening. If you're doing a movement and it, it hurts and you can't kind of figure out why, go lighter, then slow the rep down. And then as you're doing the rep, see if you can adjust your form with micro adjustments so it doesn't hurt. And that'll tell you quite a bit. So like if I'm doing a squat and I notice a little bit of pain in my knee and I go way lighter, and then I'm going down and I go, wait a minute, if I push my knees out a little bit. Oh, there the pain is gone now. Okay, now I see what I need to do, or I need to get my foot and grip the floor a little bit, or maybe I need to sit back a little more, or whatever. Right? These little micro adjustments will tell you quite a bit. That's why I say go lighter and slow down, because then you can adjust your form and technique to where it doesn't hurt, and then that tells you something. Mm -hmm. Our next caller is Justin from Missouri. Justin, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, what's up, guys? What's up, man? Uh, hey, I appreciate you taking the time to hear me out and hopefully offer some advice. So my question is kind of about bulking. Um, I have always been on the leaner side and a hard gainer, as you guys say. Um, I've been training or lifting weights for probably over 20 years now with the athletic background. Um, about 6'3", just a hair over 200 pounds right now. Pretty lean. I don't know the exact body fat percentage, but I, I, I stay pretty lean. Um, right now, I'm in a bulk. I think I'm in a bulk at 4,000 calories. Um, I've been in that bulk for about four weeks now with really no weight gain. Um, I try to get all my my macros and uh, with whole foods mostly. Um, so right now, my, my macros are kind of at about, um, about 230 grams of protein a day, 130 grams of fat, and 400 plus grams of carbs. And like I said, the weight isn't really going up. I'm getting a bit stronger, but nothing crazy. Um, so I'm just kind of wondering where to go from here. If you have any advice. Yeah. Well, I'm look, I'm, do you see his notes? So he, so you kind of have more background too on what he's been. So he comes from a bro split type of training. He found us then switched to an upper lower split. It sounds like you end up splitting up anabolic, uh, and stre stretching it out. What over sport power. were you, what, what sport did you play a lot of? I was a basketball guy, so I appreciate all yeah, Adam's uh, yeah. warrior's love and insight. Well, so here's the other – okay, here – and now th this might sound, um, I guess, uh, unmotivating, but you are you're you say 6'1", and how much was your body weight? I'm about 6'3", and I'm just over 200. Over you're saying, 200, you're and, you're, a great and place. you're pretty lean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're where I yeah. want to be. <laughs> and, you've been, and you've been working out for a long time. Okay, so like every additional pound of muscle – it's gonna be really hard. You've been training a long time. You've you've hit a pretty. I mean, that two hundred pounds lean at your height. You've got your you're eating four thousand calories, so it is gonna be challenging to get any further. So even small increases in strength are gonna be big wins. Mm -hmm. Now the challenge is, especially with people with athletic mindsets, is we don't we tend to not move fast enough. So you'll see some gains, but God, I want to move even faster. 
But at your level, and how old are you, by the way? Uh, I'll be 39 this month. And you've been working out for a long time. I mean, you're gonna you're starting to hit the point now where every added pound of muscle and every 10 pounds on the bar is going to take a lot longer and it's going to be really difficult. Like if I add 10 pounds to my max lift now in a year, I'm like ec ecstatic. Whereas, you know, 15 years ago, I could add 10 pounds to a lift in a week. Yeah. No problem. Okay. So advice now, um, I think changing up your workouts, phasing your session, your, your, your rep ranges and bumping your calories more is going to give you a little bit more of what you're looking for. That's kind of tough considering you're, you're already eating 4,000 calories a day. Um, so one way you could do this is you could just add, uh, liquid calories to each of your meals. So like dairy, you could add glasses of milk to that. That's an extra 300 calories right there. Um, you could add protein shakes. You can even add things that are a little bit more palatable because it is difficult to go above 4,000 calories. So things like fruit juices and even the occasional, you know, quote unquote junk food. This is where that becomes valuable because, um, I mean, I know what it feels like to eat 4,000 calories over 200 grams of protein. Like it's hard, especially to do it on a consistent basis. I, I want to speculate a little bit here. Uh, any chance? Okay, tell me, are you more likely the person when you train in the gym yeah. for your hour? Yeah, are you good. more likely to get after it and crush it and, and break a good sweat? Or are you more likely to cruise and kind of have like a, an, an easier lifting day? What, what do you what do you gravitate towards more? Yeah, more likely the first. I mean, I try to get after it and do yeah. things the right way. So I actually think that you doing your best to follow MAPS Anabolic to the three-day lifting routine and sticking to that and not lifting six days a week is going to serve you because what I think you're doing is six days of probably pretty intense lifting for an hour, and I think your body is going to respond better with less. And I, I would go as far to even consider MAPS 15 as a routine for a while for you to interrupt mm. how you, you currently, I might even make, if you were my client, I might even make you do that for the program and then bring you back to anabolic. And then when we come back to anabolic, I'd be like, all right, here's the deal. You, you, you got the hour to get this in and, and train, and then that's it. We're not going to do extra days of lifting. And I think that the scaling back is actually going to help you build. Yeah. yeah if do How the trigger sessions. Are you? Oh, go ahead, Doug, Justin. Oh, I was just wondering, like, step count wise, like, uh, you know, are you still playing basketball? Are you doing, you know, a lot of like cardiovascular on top of all this? No, I really don't do any cardio. I mean, on okay. usually on my like rest days, I'll do some active rest and just walk for a little bit or something, but I don't run or do anything crazy. And then I, no, I gave up basketball because it was just injury after injury at this point in my life. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I go MAPS Anabolic to do the three-day version and then do the trigger sessions. Be religious about the trigger sessions. A lot of people don't realize how big of a difference the two to three trigger sessions a day on the off days make especially with somebody who's advanced. Go mm -hmm. easy on them, though. No, no, you're just don't getting treat, a pump. Don't treat it like an athlete. You're just yeah. getting a pump. That's I made all you're that doing. mistake, so yeah, that's definitely something that can happen. Yeah, and you can, you bring the bands to school. That you, off IR, you said you, you teach at a middle school. You can have your bands in the office, and then when you get a chance, do like a 10-minute pumping session on a few body parts, and that's all you're aiming for. And then the three days a week you go in the gym, yeah. follow the program, and I, I look, uh, I, it works great for most people, it works really great for people who've been working out for a long time as they start to approach their 40s. As they start to approach their 40s, dropping the volume makes a big difference. Yes. Your body's hyper-responsive in the sense that you're, you've been training for so long. Your body, really, yeah. you're probably overdoing it a little bit. This just happened to me recently. I've been doing this forever, and I have a freaking fitness podcast, and this happened to me. I dropped the volume, and boom, I hit a PR on my deadlift that I that I'd never hit before in my entire life. So. Give that a try. So would you say, and I'm just like trying to find out more in terms of like what you've done over these 20 years of training, like where have you lived the most? Has it been mainly in the splits and like hypertrophy style or have you gone, you know, through a block of just, you know, pure power lifts or you doing functional training? Like where, where do you tend to like reside? Yeah, definitely for the, for the bigger chunk of it, it was that hypertrophy training, uh, the bodybuilding, yeah. the, the higher reps. And then stumbling upon you guys a couple of years back is when I was really the first time I ever lifted heavy. Like I did, you know, sets of five mm. or less, like I had never done that before. Perfect. So that's still pretty novice to me. Um, so I, I know I mentioned I did go through anabolic, but really I've kind of been living an aesthetic more and okay. I kind of split that up. Yeah, dude. I would like, I would like you to do a block of power lift yep. at some point. I, I'm, I'm down for that too. Yep. I definitely think that I, the, I think maps anabolic would be great. Uh, power lift, strong symmetry. Those programs would be great for someone like you. Yep. 
L- less is going to be more, dude. I really do feel that. Like that's why I, w- I was almost leaning towards like making you go through like a map fifteen, which would probably feel like torture for someone like you. Yeah. Um, but I, I just it would be more to get the message across to you. Like, look at bro, look at how much we reduced, and look what happened, and, and look what happened. Like that, w- it wouldn't be like I think it's necessarily the best program for you. It would be more like a, a, a lesson I'm trying to teach you is like, look how much I'm scaling yeah. back on how much you're doing, and look how good you feel, look how strong you feel. Yep. So we need to find somewhere in the middle. And the fact that you now you just told us that you were spending more time as aesthetic, I really think that anabolic and power lift are a, a better choice for you. And 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 maybe, and I don't know if you do that, we didn't ask this, uh, if you're the type of person who tends to train to failure a lot, uh, advice might be to leave two in the tank. Um, I, I think that you're at a place where you're moving enough, you have a fast enough metabolism, you're lean enough, you already have enough 4,000 calories, you need that or above just to see any sort of gains. And so things that are going to help you is reducing the intensity, reducing the volume, uh, those types of things may by, actually be By the be way, the Justin, you know, it, you, it, it might not even necessarily be that you're overtraining. But the reduction in volume may is still going to send the signal to build. You're just not going to burn as many calories. So now that 4,000 calories now becomes a surplus. Mm-hmm. So sometimes that's all it is as well. So because what I don't want is for you to think, well, I don't feel overtrained. Like I feel like I get through the workouts. I feel like I'm not super sore. Sometimes it's like, man, I'm eating 4,000 calories. I'm just doing too much. Mm-hmm. You cut it down a little bit. You're still sending yeah, it's a very- easier to build. That's that right. Point. You're still sending a very effective muscle building signal. Which that's part of why I was leaning towards the mass 15 is like, I think if I just cut back on the the intense activity that he's doing, yeah. I think the ac- extra calories right away will, will potentially go to building versus you're just constantly burning all those calories. Yeah. So, so we'll send you, you, you already have MAPS anabolic. We'll send you mass 15. The advanced version would be appropriate for you. And then, like I said, I think the programs that you'd like the most- Power lift, strong, symmetry, anabolic. I think those would be great for you. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking about symmetry, so that's good to hear. Cool. Yep. Awesome. You, you got it, man. Thanks for calling awesome. in. Thank you, guys. You got All it. Right. Appreciate it. I really, I really want people to understand that programs like MAPS Aesthetic, because MAPS Aesthetic is a high-volume program. Right. It's, you're, it's, you're, it's not meant for people to live in it. MAPS Aesthetic is for people who've got good experience, good sleep, good recovery. They do three months of it and then they move out of it. It was yeah. inspired by peak. me peaking for body yeah, you can't exactly. do You can't <laughs> do that much volume. Most people will not be able to yeah. get away with that much volume year round. Yeah, yeah. It's well, just too much. Live in the gym. It yeah. is. You got to bring it down. You got to bring it back. You got to give yourself times of, of deloading. By the way, studies show that people, especially experienced people, where they build muscle is during the deload phase. Yeah. That's where the muscle That's starts to back think, on the body. This is why I totally. think he's going to, I think following either a 15 or, you know, sticking to anabolic the way it's written or power lift yep. suggestion, though, that type of program programming for him is going to, his body's going to respond. Bro, to I, I went down to a mass 15 protocol and I hit a PR at 43 years old. And the previous time I hit that uh, a number that was even close, I was in my early 30s. And it was because I reduced the volume. It and, was like, and by the way, that's the, it sounds like we're selling or pitching MAPS 15. It's not that MAPS 15 was so magical. It was just a indicator that you were doing too much. That's right. You know, yeah, and by right. scaling back like that, that's look right. how the body responded. Our next caller is Amanda from California. Amanda, how's it going? How can we help you? Hi. Hey. hey. <laughs> uh, I'm a little starstruck just because. Uh, I mean, I find athletes more admirable than I guess like actors. So, and I've been listening to you guys for six months and you're from NorCal, which is dope. Yeah. yeah. I was just going to ask you, you, I mean, you have the Giants jersey you're rocking and you're in the LA oh, area. Too. Huh? I didn't even realize that. Yeah. Um, my question is pretty simple. So I'm a female trainer naturally. Um, and I have a few gentlemen who I train and we go pretty heavy on the, bench press so and they're getting they're being very receptive to my programming obviously they're getting stronger so me spotting now is getting a little bit to be like nerve-wracking i'm like i don't know who's more nervous like him underneath the weight or me trying to figure out yeah so like last one i mean he was only 230 but I, i'm buck 20 5 10 but i was like holding like a monkey grip and any tips like or I can ask. It's, and the thing is, sometimes it's at a gym or it's at his home. So, yeah, great, great, great question. Yeah, we haven't so, talked about this much. Yeah, so, number one, if you're, and you know this, right? If you're appropriately adding load, then the kind of help that they'll need may very minimal. Yeah, it may translate to like 10, 15 pounds of you lifting. 
Now the question is, what if there's a major issue, right? Like, like what if? Route. Yeah, yeah, like what if it's, it's, yeah they something something rare happens, like his pec tears or something like that. Some pops, you're you're yeah. both fucked. Yeah, yeah. in that case, it's <laughs> kind of <laughs> push it away from his no neck. Ni- there's yeah. no nice way to put that. You're no, both no, fucked. No, no. It's, no. It's, Here's it's, what you do. It's a bad day at the gym. Here's what you do. Is you <laughs> su- no, Justin said it. You support yeah. the weight so it doesn't roll back on his neck. Yeah. Have him hold it on his chest yeah. if he can. Then get to one side of the bar. And let him know the bar is gonna it's gonna drop on one side. Unload the weight, let the bar flip out, yep. and you saved him. But that's very I, rare. It's very rare that someone has a catastrophic injury where it's like the that's it. Like you need to lift all the weight. Like I've actually never seen that happen. Yeah. I, would, I know it happens, but I've never seen it. Happen. I would also too. I would also encourage these guys because, and I know how much us guys like to do this shit. I would actually try and encourage them to not max out that often. It should be a very oh, no. it should be a rare occasion. Yeah, we've only done it twice oh, okay yeah okay so. okay do, cool do you cool. do you have access do they have safety bars Are the benches you're using you do they have safeties that you can use yeah is that they have oh, arms wait. underneath yes if if they have oh a good bench. like the racks correct yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't done it there yet, but that's actually a good idea. Yeah, well, no, so well, that's, that's, that's the move is to actually do it in a squat rack and put the, and actually, so put the bench and the, set it up on the squat rack, put the, safety, the safety bars like for squatting where the yeah. bench would go. So it's like right where it would be catch right at his throat. That's, that's the, that's the place that, I mean, that's the only time I would have a client that I felt like, um, I wasn't secure enough to help with it. Like if they were lifting a lot of weight and like, man, yeah. if this something happens, I would use, uh, safeties in a in a power cage or a squat rack, and some benches even come with them. Yeah. And then you're set. If he drops the weight, the safeties catch it, and then all you got to do is have him slide out well, and you unload the. It's intimidating, but to Sal's earlier point, it's really like a ten to fifteen pound difference like, that you're kind of covering. Uh, if he's yeah. if he's choosing appropriate weight for himself and he's not like way overshooting, so. Um, but yeah, it can get like <laughs> it's pretty sketchy, you know, thinking it's that you're like going to lift the whole thing. Time, like- spotting so i'm just trying to like <laughs> figure out like okay so if i hold monkey and if he goes like one side or the other then i right. could just flip it this way or then flip yeah. it just, that just way make sure you have good posture obviously so, as you're leaning over uh, on that but note too though yeah I, I i'm so dumb for not even thinking of that that's why yeah that's the easy so, fix and, yeah. and another tip when it comes to spotting and i know some knucklehead guys are not fans of this but i always correct them when they act like this where they they don't want you to touch the bar until they need the help i think that's terrible yeah. That's terrible. You okay? want to keep the bar moving. You want to keep the bar moving. And so when I'm spotting, so let's say, uh, you know, we we put weight on the bar that I know that, you know, I know Sal can't get, you know, six of these things. Maybe he can get like three on his own, but we're going for six. So you're talking like seven, 800 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> so so <laughs> I, I actually am spotting him with my index fingers right out the gate. So even at one rep, when he doesn't even need me, I'm actually riding the weight with my, so I can feel I can feel the momentum if it's slowing down and I'm just giving. And if you do a really good job of spotting from right out the gates, you barely have to add anything. Where you get in trouble is standing back, letting them go to failure, and then now they're stuck. And then now the two of you together are trying it, then you're kind of fucked. Yeah. So ride yeah, the weight, no. ride the weight early. Ride the weight right out the gates. And if they and they try and tell you don't, you're the trainers, tell them fuck off. This is this is the better way to train. You do not want to get stuck, and then I help you. That's how you get hurt. And then, and yeah, then, if you've ever failed, you know that once you fail, like your power output drops 50%. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. then everything else kicks in and that's where injury happens. Yeah. And so, yeah. um, but I know some, you know, bros in the gym, oh, they, yeah. they want to, oh, I got it. I got it. It's, it's like, like the no. cardinal rule. Yeah, it's most of my, like, my teenagers too. Yeah. I'm like, right. okay, buddy, I can humble you real quick. Yeah. One. Yeah. And two, <laughs> like yeah. I always have, you know, like well, fingertips. Yes, yeah. especially when they get the one arm versus the other kind of coming up really quickly. Yeah, so you know, instability. It's not even worth it. Yeah, because yeah. then you might get the weight to shift on you, create a whole nother problem. But so. I will say this too: there's a lot of fear. People have a lot of fear with the bench press that if they fail, oh my god, or whatever. I have failed with yeah. a barbell and the bench press so many times, and there is a technique to getting out from under it. Yeah, Literally, it's on my chest. It I roll it down to my waist. I sit up. Yeah. And then I and then I I can I can get out of the way and I've done it so it many smashes times. Smashes your goods, but you know, hey, it's all part of the thing. <laughs> but I'm here and I have I have yeah, more it's kids. Than your still, brains, yeah. yeah, exactly. But the move is the squat rack, like we said. That's to be, it. Sa- to be safe, I think that if you got that yeah. option, that that covers you, so you don't got to do any of that crazy shit. And then the, my advice would be just to always. 
be spotting early so you're not you're not caught up waiting. Yeah. Uh, and now, then, and now then Amanda, as a trainer, uh, do you have Prime and Prime Pro? If you don't, I'll send you I'll send you those because I think those are very valuable. For trainers. I don't know. Okay. I'll send those over. I'll send those over to you before Adam gets really angry. Yeah, she's only been, she's only been listening for three months. She gets oh, a pass. Okay. Okay. I said six. Oh, you said okay. Well, then now you don't well, get now a pass. Now fuming. Now I'm mad. <laughs> no. Jeez. Yeah. Ab, yeah. Uh, and if you haven't watched the free webinars, I mean, we're sending you the programs for free. But if you haven't watched the free webinars that we've done on Prime and Prime Pro as a <laughs> as a coach and a trainer, so valuable, extremely valuable. So and I've been trying to come up to you some of your live stuff because. My family still lives up there, and I was would want to see. Are you guys going to do any other live? Well, I'll tell you what. You're a trainer and a coach, and you have family up here. The next time that you are coming up here, email the email that you emailed in. Email the email that you emailed oh, in. Does that make sense? Yeah, email, <laughs> email the email that you emailed in on already, uh, and let us know that you're in town, and you can come we'll see watch. If we can have you watch. Yeah, it. have you watch, watch a live recording and say hi. Yeah, thank you. All you right. got it. All right, Amanda. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks, guys. You got it. Yeah, safeties. That duh. <laughs> yeah. 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 I thought she was already yeah, that worried about. It, I thought she sure. was already using those, and she was no. just yeah. Yeah, no, no, that's the simple. That's a simple. Yeah, I mean, you don't need a spotter if no. you, if you're doing that by if you're on your own. That's what you do is you use the safeties, and you're and you're totally fine. A good, a good spotter, though, man. You, people don't know that fingers. I, I, people don't I, I, know that. I'll spot four. I'll spot four hundred pounds with two fingers, but yeah. I'm right. I'm riding the weight from the get. A good spot. A good spotter with good strength training. Unless you're trying to hit a PR by yourself and you compete, and so therefore anybody touching the bar might okay did right. i do it power lifting you need that but if you're working out and you're hitting weights that you're not sure if you can do and you have someone spotting th this a good spotter should maintain the bar speed yes yeah. that's the idea maintain the bar speed and then you can ask them afterwards hey that last rep were you really helping a lot yeah i was okay well then i, I was that, that young guy though i get pissed somebody was like don't touch it totally that's yeah. why i made that comment i'm like that's such a like got young guy bro like move to be thing. like don't yeah. touch it. it's like no that's if your goal is to build more muscle to get strong on the bench you want me to, to spot you like this that's mm -hmm. the way to do it not wait till you fail and yeah. then all your other muscles are now <laughs> trying to help out and it's my like, shoulders up I, here. I, like i never use spars now the, yeah. you know, like if I can't do it, I can't do it. Yeah. Yep. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. And again, they're all free. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 